Hello, my friends, and welcome to Midweek Encourager. Uh, thanks for joining today. If you've got your Bible, I hope you'll open it up to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 28. I'm going to read just one verse this morning, uh, but we're talking about uh, despised by the world. Despised by the world. An outline by Pastor Greg Laurie, and uh, I was blessed when I read this. I want to share it with you. Um, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and uh, verse 28. God chose the despised things of the world, the things that were despised by the world, things that were counted as nothing at all, and used those things that were considered nothing at all to bring to nothing the things that the world considered important, all right? And so uh, what, a, what a special verse. God took the things that the world thought were nothing and elevated them so that the world could see that everything else was unimportant, all right? And... Uh, you know, I, I think we've been together long enough now that you know I love Christmas. I enjoy the Christmas season. I enjoy the Christmas music. I enjoy the Christmas decorations. And uh, I, I, I love Christmas. But sometimes I think we may have made Christmas too beautiful. We've made Christmas too perfect. We see it through uh, different lenses and as a result, we've lost part of the, the, the raw power of the original story. We've added so many layers of tradition that we sometimes have, we forget what it was all about. We've romanticized the images of Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus with halos over their over their heads and peaceful expressions on their faces and it probably wasn't that way uh i know that when my three children were there and 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 when uh, when when my three children were born and it was not a calm and peaceful situation uh, that it was, it was, it was not all sunshine and roses, <laughs> but you know, we, we've, we've romanticized them. We've romanticized the, the wise men, uh, arriving on their camels, wearing coordinated colors. And, uh, uh no, by the way, you may already have realized this, but the Bible says nothing about three wise men. They simply brought three gifts. And we certainly romanticized the shepherds. Oh, those precious, blessed shepherds who were out there in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night, not bothering anybody. And uh, the angels appeared to them. But you have to remember that the on the social ladder, the Shepherds were below the bottom rung. They were, they did work that nobody else wanted to do. They were despised, absolutely despised. They went out there and got their hands and their feet dirty. And so when the shepherds heard from the angels that Messiah had been born in a manger, or, or in a barn, they could relate to that. As our verse said that we read earlier, 1 Corinthians 1, 28, God chose the things that were despised by the world, things that were counted as nothing at all, the shepherds, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considered important. Jesus wasn't born in a palace. Jesus wasn't born in a king's home, even though he was the king of the universe. 
He was born in a barn. He was born and laid in that feed trough, that manger. During Jesus, uh, during Jesus's earthly ministry, this was kind of his uh, his mode of operation. It was uh, the way he acted because he always went after the outcasts, right? In John's gospel, we see Jesus showing mercy to the woman who was caught in adultery. And John says, in the very act of adultery, the Pharisees wanted to stone her. They already had rocks in their hands. But Jesus showed her mercy. Jesus showed her kindness. And Jesus gave her forgiveness and, uh, and, and saved her right there on the spot. In Luke, we find him going out of his way to reach Matthew, uh, not Matthew, but Zacchaeus, the tax collector. My tax collectors ran together there. But Jesus went out of his way to, to reach Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and go to his home and explain the gospel to him. And Zacchaeus, an outcast, someone who was despised, was brought into God's family that day as he trusted Jesus as his Savior. This is why Jesus was called a friend of sinners. God handpicked the shepherds, men who were below the bottom rung of the social ladder, to be, God chose them to be the first evangelists to tell the world the Messiah had come. Now this should give hope to ordinary people like you and me, because if God is willing to use the shepherds below the bottom rung of the ladder, that should encourage you and me that God can use us this Christmas season to share the good news with other people, people we're around, people we may not even know, people we may never see again, but that's okay. We need to share with them, Christmas is about not Santa Claus, but Christmas is about our Savior, my Savior, who wants to be your Savior, and he will save you if you will simply ask him. We can do this. The shepherds did it. They had no training. We've been around God and God's people much, much longer than the shepherds had been. We can tell other people that Jesus is the reason for Christmas. Despised by the world, absolutely. But he was God's son in the flesh so that you and I, could come to him as our personal Lord, our personal Savior, and then share him with a lost and dying world. May I pray with you? Oh, dear Father, thank you for loving us enough to send your Son to this dirty, filthy, sinful world in order that we might have a way to get to your perfect world. God, give us courage this Christmas season as we're in and out of our homes, as we're in and out of stores, as we're in and out of shopping and all of the, all the busyness. God, don't let us be too busy to tell people that Jesus not only is the reason for the season, but that Jesus loves them enough to come into their lives if they will simply ask. Give us courage. Give us your spirit. And give us, Father, lost souls coming into your kingdom this Christmas season. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, listen, thanks again for joining. It's a great honor for me to be able to come into your home. It's an honor to be your pastor. And I hope to see you in person, in church, this Sunday. I love you.